Hello, my name is Marcus Adams, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a disk image file that you can use to deploy your application. Alright, so here's my application. It's called Hello World, so it doesn't do much, but I think people are going to love it. So let's get this released to the world. So here's what we're trying to do. Here's a Hello World disk image. This is what our customers are going to download. And when they open it up, they see um, this disk image, which allows them to easily install our application, which is just an application bundle. So the user can't modify it, and that's pretty important. You don't want them, you know, changing the locations of these uh, icons, or you don't want them, you know, adding other things to the uh, to the disk image. So the disk image is read only. However you create it, that's how it's going to stay. All right, so let's get started in creating this. I'm going to go ahead and close this, uh, eject it, and get rid of it because I don't need it anymore. All right, so we're going to create it from scratch. So the first thing you want to do is create your background image. So I'm going to create that in Adobe Photoshop Elements here. And we'll just create a new blank image. We have to make it small enough that it'll fit on the people's screens, but large enough you know, that they can easily read it. So I'm going to make the width 500 by 400 here. And uh, it doesn't really matter in my case what the background is. I can make it transparent or white. It, do it doesn't matter. Because I'm just going to overwrite it with a gradient anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now to, to mask my particular application, I'm looking for a sky blue gradient. So I'm going to go down here and pick the blue and start with the light blue. And then I'm going to go to, you know, a darker blue. And I'm going to pick the gradient tool and just swipe. And there's my gradient background. I'm going to add my text. First thing I'm going to do is probably add your title at the top. This is going to be fairly big. So I'm going to pick the 48 point font here and name the application is Hello World. I'm going to center that by eye here. And then I'm going to create another line of text. That's got to be smaller here so it'll fit up without going off the background. And I'm going to tell, give them a little instructions here. And I'm going to say drag the icon to the applications folder. And go ahead and center that. And last thing I need is an arrow. So in Photoshop Elements, I can, you can use custom shapes. Got uh, a couple different style arrows here. I like this the best. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my arrow on there, center it up, and I'm basically done. I'm just going to save this background image as a as a PNG or, or a ping image, save it right to my desktop, call it hello world background, and put my extension on there, and save it. So I'm pretty much done in Photoshop. All right, so here's the background image I, I just created. Now the next step we want to do is go ahead and actually create that uh, blank disk image. We can start adding our files to it. So the way you do that is we need the, the disk utility that comes with your Macintosh. You don't have to install Xcode or anything. Um, this is already on your Macintosh. So you just go to the Applications folder and Utilities and it's called Disk Utility. So we just open that up. All right. So first thing we do want to do is create our new uh, new image here. So we click the new image button. All right. And the save as this is the, going to be the actual file name of the disk image. So you generally want to put the name of your application and uh, you know, in the version. So you're going to release that different disk image, you know, for each version. 
but then the name of the disk image, this is how it's going to show when they uh, when they mount this disk image, uh, this is going to be the name of it on their desktop. So you want to you know, go ahead and just name it the name of your application so they know uh, what what the disk image is when they have it open. Now the size here, it isn't really that important now because you're going to compress it. Uh, so if it's bigger than you need, don't worry about it. But you need to make sure it's at least big enough you know, to fit the, da the data that you're going to put on there, which is the size of your application bundle. So... You can, you can you know make it pretty big here, but uh, the 100 megabyte uh, default is fine for me. The rest of the settings we're just going to leave default. It is important to make sure though that the the image format is read write care because we do need to add files to it. And actually, since this is my read write version and not my final version, I'm going to go ahead and just um, put the RWs on there just because I'm going to have two different versions on my desktop and I know that this is the one I can write to. So I'm going to go ahead and create that disk image. And disk utility went ahead and created that disk image and mount mounted it for me. So if I double click on this, if I double click on that uh, mounted disk image, you know, it's just a, a blank partition. Uh, I can add files to it. The first thing I want to do is set the background of the disk image. And to do that, we just right click and pick show view options. All right, so this is where it specifies the background. And you know, it defaults to white, but we actually want to use a picture. So we change that to picture and we'll drag our image there. Now we don't want to drag it from our desktop. We need to actually copy our background image into the disk image and then use that image as the background here. So you see what happens as soon as I drag it on here, you know, it sets the background. So we'll just size it up real real quick so that we don't see any extra white space around there. You know, things are starting to already look pretty pretty good, but we do want to hide the actual Im image now. Um, and the way we do that, of course, on Macintosh is we just add a appear to the beginning of the file name. Now, Finder is not going to let you do that, so we can't do that here. Just add a period to it. What we're going to have to do is open up a terminal window. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And to get to our mounted volume, of course, we go to our volumes folder. And then our volume is right there. So we just change directory into there. We can see the, the only file on there so far is a back, our background image. We just rename it. And we really could name it to, to anything we wanted to. Um, as long as we put that period at the beginning. Now notice that even though we, we renamed it, uh, Macintosh didn't, wasn't fooled. You still have your background image. Uh, even though the, the file is no longer visible, the background is still visible. All right, so another thing you want to do here on the uh, the background is you want to set it to always open an icon view. If the user changes the view to show, you know, to show, the, show it in the list view, you, want, you don't really want to let the user do that to sort of override it and always open it in an icon view. You just, you just click this checkbox. Now, another thing is the default icon size is rather small, so you want to change that from 48 to uh, 104. And you're actually done here. Uh, do not click use the defaults. There's no reason to do that. If you do that, uh, every folder on, on your Mac is gonna, are going to use these defaults. So what's cool, it, though, is the rest of these settings um, are actually stored with this disk image. So when you give that to your customers, they're going to be stuck with these same settings, which is exactly what we want. So actually, done, we're done with that. We're going to close it. And now we just need to drag our application onto there. So this is our application bundle. Uh, it actually has a, you know, a, a .app or .app extension. And we're just going to copy it onto our disk image. So that, that part's done. Uh, 
we just need to create a link to our applications folder. All right, so in Windows, we call them shortcuts, but in uh, on Macintosh, we call them aliases. We want to create an alias to the applications folder and put that on there. And the easy way to do that is open up uh, applications folder in Finder. And we do a command option drag. And you can see that the drag image in there changes to a little arrow, which shows that I've, I'm dragging an alias to the applications folder. And just drag it right on there. Another thing you can do um, if you can't quite figure out how to, how to control click and drag to create the alias is you can just right click on the applications and pick and make alias. Problem with that, I, of course, is that, well, it just added that name alias on there. So after you drag it on there, you'd have to rename it. Of course, get rid of the alias name. So we're basically done. The disk image is exactly how we wanted to look for the customer. Uh, but we do need to lock it down so they can't change it. If we leave it at how it is now, a customer can go in here and just move these things around or just, you know, delete them entirely. And we don't want that. So we're just going to lock it down. So I need to unmount this so I can convert it in the disk utility. So I'm just going to close it. And I need to get it on my terminal window. And then eject it and I've shut down my disk utility but it's easy to open up now that I have my disk image I just right click on it and pick open with disk utility all right. so I select my disk image here in disk utility and all I do is click the convert button now and you notice that there's a setting on here. Um, we're going to convert this disk image, and we are converting it to a read-only disk image. But if we pick read-only, it's not going to be compressed. So if we pick compressed, it's not just compressed; it's also read-only. So compressed is the setting you want to pick here. And so this is going to be our our final version of the disk image. I'm going to get rid of the RW and save it to my desktop. And we're done. So here's the, the disk image. I'm going to show you a little something. If I double click to open up this this read write disk image, which is the, the one that I can still modify, you'll notice that it doesn't open by default. I have to go farther and double click on the disk image there, the mounted disk image for it to come up. But you'll notice that it's different. If I click on this read-only disk image, it opens right up. And the reason it does that is because this is a standard way to release an application bundle in Macintosh. They say that if your application is self-contained in an application bundle, that this is the way to do it. And because of that, it recognizes a read-only disk image as something to immediately open up so the user can view it. So there you go. We're, we're basically done. You got your disk image. Uh, give your application to the world. Let them install it in their applications folder. All I have to do is boom, and they're done. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you're wondering how I created the icon for my application bundle, uh, look for the, another video where I show you how to create that icon. And in future videos, I'm going to show you how to create a package if you are distributing more than uh, an application bundle. But for now, we're done. Thank you.